Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. I'm Mike Stidham, and I'm joined again by the mullet, Matt Raines. Great to have you back, Matt. Oh, it's great to be back, Mike. Gone for a few weeks, back. Good to do it. This guy is a soldier, man, representing the Utah Army National Guard, doing his thing out there. Well, uh, great to have him back. And you missed out on week one of our quest toward the belts. The lightweight championship round is underway, and uh, boy, this uh, brackets are really starting to shape up. Yeah, Mike, I, I heard Tommy Wagner came back to actually compete in this bracket, so I'm actually pretty pretty excited about this whole thing. Believe it or not, we've got a lot of people coming out of the woodwork for this one. I'm super excited about the Bird Dog, T-Bone Taborn, and, and uh, you know some of the old greats are back here buying for the belt and the $1,000. Well, tonight, Chase Pearson and Wade Haskell are going to be buying for that slot in the, uh, in the brackets to see who might be able to uh, compete for the belt. Yeah, it's, it, I think it's going to be a good matchup, Mike, and I really want to see who's going to win and who's going to take on Tommy. I, I really want to see this one. Well, these guys have been uh, kind of the newcomers to the division, if you will. They've, they've been really tearing it up, especially Chase Pearson. This guy's just been knocking heads. I'm super excited about it. we got a lot of stuff before we get to that match, so it's the Ultimate Combat Experience coming right at you. So many lightweights coming out for the championship round that we actually had to start a pigtail round to kind of see who could compete for that last slot in the uh, brackets. Who are these two guys coming out here? Well, we got Daniel Grass, the Gumby guy, and then he's going up against uh, Kevin Allred. But they both actually train at the same gym, so this is going to be a pretty good one. Kevin Allred's been around just a little while. These guys are very, very similar, both kind of bendy, twisty, ground submission guys. Lightweight no holds barred. Check it out. All right, well, I'm back in the studio here with uh, my best friend, Brandon Kaiser, here to uh, do some commenting on these fights. Here we go, Daniel Grass, Elastic Man. Happy to be here with the Yamasaki, and we love this guy, don't we? We do, you know, Elastic Man, he, he lives at the gym, uh, trains hard, and he gets better every single fight. Five foot 11, 157 pounds, coming out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, going up against Kevin the Predator Allred. What do we know about Kevin Allred? Well, Kevin Allred's another tough fighter with a lot of potential. Um, his work schedule, he's one of those working class fighters, you know. He's 5'6", uh, 145 pounds from Kearns, Utah. Uh, he's not able to train as often maybe as Daniel. Daniel lives at the gym, literally. He lives at the Whoa, gym. Whoa, is that a burning cross on his arm there, oh, Yamasaki? Yes. Is you that know gonna what? play into this fight? Always, scene? always. Daniel always fighting the uh, the good fight. <laughs> All right. Well, Daniel can't seem to escape the uh, the interesting tattooed fighters for anything. Cross on fire. That's. <laughs> Looks like these guys are filling each other out. You know what I heard? I heard um, Stidham singing on a song, uh, singing. In the, oh, boy, a left hook. Wow, Daniel Grass showing some stand-up skills, getting on that top. That was a big left hook. We don't see Daniel on top all that often. Usually he's twisted up like a pretzel on bottom, getting ready to bust a move, and here he is on top. What do you think, Brian? Oh, oh, oh go for hold. a leg lock. An inverted toe hold. Wow, this is kind of crazy. Uh, Kevin have a, has a potential for a leg lock of his own. It looks like he's aborted it. And meanwhile, Daniel oh, continues Daniel to just reefing on, on that, that ankle. ankle. Kevin doing the right thing by, by reaching up and trying to take some of the pressure off with his hands. And he looks pretty calm. Kevin, Kevin looks pretty composed, considering he's in a pretty wicked ankle lock right now. Wow, look at, look at Daniel just continuing, continuing to spin and uh, go for different leg locks. He's, He's gotten to a scramble here. Oh, and a kimura oh, by Allred. Oh. Looks like uh, Daniel. Oh, and he's wow. over. In true Daniel Grass fashion. You, you can't break elastic. Backbends back bends right out of the, oh, the kimura. Oh, and a beautiful punch overhand. to get out of it. What a Another fight. Another right hand. Great work. What a great fight. Wow. 
Well, that's a lot of action in just just a. I, I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> I know. Knees with a key, with a V lock. V lock with knees. This is. Uh, oh, and he's cranking that sucker. I, I don't know if it helps or hurts him to have that that leg inside the grip. What do you think, Kaiser? Ah, uh, well, I think he decided to heck with the arm lock. I'm going to pound this guy. That's that's not a bad strategy from there. He's kind of working what we call an, uh, an arm uh, cradle. R rather than hooking the head, you hook the arm and the leg, uh, and it and it's kind of an overlooked. Um, control position in, in a lot of, uh, in a lot, in, in, at least in jujitsu. Boy, Daniel's positioning looks great. He is, he is all over Kevin Allred. He's keeping good top position. Saw an opportunity to get a hook in there and, and jumped right on it. Thought he was going to get the back there, but he's looks like Kevin Allred's kind of working his way out of there. Showing, showing some good submission defense so far. He might find himself in an armbar here. And there here it is. Good careful. call, Kaiser. It looks like it's on tight. Oh, he needs to pull his heel, his heels down. He's yes. he's he's working. The, we talked about this in one of our episodes. Crossing the feet, which takes the pressure off the back of your opponent's head and allows them to stand up and pull out. Which is exactly what Kevin Allred did. And now now we've got a roll reversal here. He's we've got working Kevin Allred on top. Working a little bit, bit of cradle action and a Uma Plata type of maneuver by uh, by Grass. Oh, a Ooh, nice, nice punch. That's right shot. to the liver. How do you score this round, Yamasaki? I've got to give, give it to uh, Daniel. Daniel's had uh, had that big left hand to drop them, drop uh, Kevin in the beginning of the round. Um, he's had was all all over him with the submission attempts. I I think it was a definite 10-9, possibly a 10-10-8 round for uh, for Grass. I'm with you on that. 10-9 for Grass, unofficial score of course, but uh, more action coming up.
Well, one of the most uh, action-packed first rounds I've seen in a long time. Yeah, we got to see both guys in all ranges, you know. Very, actually very ground. technical. Guys looking really good, both these guys. It's both a, of them coming out with a, a lead right. Kevin Allred coming out with a nice little kick there. Didn't quite get close enough, but still oh, threw it up there. Oh, my goodness. Wow, look at that. There's that uh, yoga jujitsu. So what is what? What do you think Daniel Grass wants to do from here? He's it's weird. He's half on the back it and is. half in the guard at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I, that's wow. Kevin's done a great, great job of putting uh, Daniel up against a fence. That's a good place to be when a guy's got his guard locked on you. He needs to get his right arm free so that he can posture up and and do a little bit more damage with his blows. And it looks like he's there. that. Oh, nice right elbow. Great call, yep. A little Cleared short elbow. Head. Got a nice and Daniel shot. Uh -oh. right on the arm bar. Let's see if, he, oh, and he's crossing his feet again. And he, he could still pull that off with the feet crossed, but he could really do a lot better job of keeping that on. Oh, his. it looks, ooh. Yeah, wow. Kevin Allred's battled out of a number of submissions so yes. far. You know, there's a time and a place for the, for the crossed feet. That's for when your opponent is actually trying to, um, to stack you, and you can use the, uh, um, crossing your feet and flaring your elbows to make space and finish the armbar. But oh boy, nice cradle position, good knees to the kidney area. Yeah, Kevin Allred's given Daniel some of those knees back that he took in the first round. Payback time. And this is almost exactly where mount Daniel position. was earlier. Great, great way to go from side control to mount. And we've seen Daniel escape this many times going out the back door like that. Do you think he'll pull it off tonight, Yamasaki? I don't know. It's you never know, but uh, oh, there he goes. That's his. That's his uh, go-to move when he's mounted. And he's right on a. I, well, I don't know what he's doing. Looks like a knee bar, maybe. Boy, I'm impressed with. Uh, you, you give Daniel six more months of living in a gym, wow. and he is going to be absolutely dangerous. He is. He's he's doing a great job of positioning and being aggressive for his submissions. He's, he. He's always grabbing something and going for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he's just, he, he's got all the things in place. It's just the fine details that are missing. Even on this toe hold here, um, there, he's got ah, he nice to do a crunch. There, but yeah, he's got to do a crunch and crank that foot up towards his opponent's yeah, ignore, rear end. <laughs> exactly. Ignore, ignore those little rabbit punches and put that guy's big toe in the bunghole. Oh, <laughs> nice right punch. That'll always restart your... Uh, what you're thinking. Kevin Allred doing a great job of keeping the pressure on. He yes. just keeps hammering away and fighting out of submission after submission attempt. He's got the back here now throwing some good punches. Yeah, he could he could score easily, points. He could easily Nine win this round. round. I think I think he's going to. Unless uh, Daniel Grass pulls out something big here, I'm, I'd probably Daniel's got to do something. He's in danger of potential. Oh wow, boy, yeah. he was potentially in, uh, could have lost the fight right there. Dave would have stopped it. I don't think Daniel was really getting hurt there, but he could have he could have had that stopped by Dave. You know Dave. what? It's so dangerous to think that way too, because you think I'm not getting hurt, I'm fine, but on the cards, you are getting hurt. You are getting demolished. All right, round three. We got it. I've got it. Even even Steven here going in the three. This is going to be very interesting. We're going to see who comes out to win this fight. Well, in the first round, we saw Daniel come out with a punch. Second round. Oh, wow. a big straight right by uh, Kevin. Good stand-up exchange here. Both guys just throwing leather at each other. Oh, an inside leg pick by, nice kick leg by kick. Kevin and a blitz. Well, I think I think Kevin's looking good standing. I, I, I'd like to see him back out and continue throwing those kickboxing combinations. There's a grab the head and squeeze. My $50 is still safe. <laughs> <laughs> what Kevin needs to do here is take try and get his left hand on the elbow of Daniel Grass and pry his head out of there, and then he'll have basically the back position. He's real close to getting that if he can get his he's head got free. clear his head. There, it, there he goes. And now he's got got the back of Daniel Grass, and we'll see what he can do with it. Daniel doing a good job of defending here. What do you like to do, Yamasaki? To hammer away from here or try and get the choke in or whatever your opponent gives um, you? You know what? I, it just kind of depends on how they're, they're doing things. I would use a heel kick. Or right, right here, I try to use a right heel kick to the abs. I might use bring my right heel in, distract him a little bit. Um, or turning him, oh, nice. Turn him over uh, where he, he's lost his, he's lost it back here, but he's still in mount position. This happens quite a bit um, in, in that transition. You know, you might lose it back, yep. but you still maintain the mount. And he's Kevin doing a good job doing right a here. good job with the mount. I'd like to get, see him get a little bit more upright, you know, rather than these little, 
Ooh, nice, nice elbow attempt. Those ones that narrowly miss are prob probably the most dangerous because when they do kind of skip off your forehead, that's, that's when you when get you the get cuts. Those cuts. That's right. You know, I, I, I would agree that posturing up and hammering down is a good idea, but ah, Daniel Grassi always sneaks out the back door. He gets those legs up on you, so I like that. Oh, oh a great he escape. Didn't, he didn't even need his back door that time because nope. he just, just oompa and good rolled old right classic over. Classic escape, oompa. Uh, we'll see what Daniel can do from the top and, and what uh, and what uh, Kevin can do from the bottom. Daniel was always busy looking for arm bars when he was on the bottom. Right now, it looks like uh, uh, Kevin's just kind of hanging out, just trying to, you know, kind of get his bearings and, and survive. Oh, and his guards passed. That was, uh, I would have liked to have seen him, uh, Kevin crossing his feet and making it a little bit more difficult for, uh, for Daniel. But Daniel, great job. He's got a reverse. I think this is the second time we've seen this, this somewhat awkward position out of Daniel Grass. I think he finished round one in a similar position. And I can't see if he's got Kevin's right arm trapped inside. If he does, we call this a backwards upside down triangle. The backwards upside down triangle, as Yamasaki calls it, with the uh, hammer fist to the back of the head, to the side of the head. Take a couple Very to good. the body. He could be looking for toe holds here. He could be looking for a Kimura on that free arm. Um, but he's doing a good job. He's winning points here, and he's going to win the round if he, if he can continue wow. maintaining control here. Yeah, I don't think he's going to finish Kevin Allred. Kevin's proven he's yeah, very he does. difficult See, to this, finish. This is the uh, backwards upside down triangle. And yeah, go for that toe hold. Oh. Uh -oh. Wow, that's the end of a, of a really great fight. Way to start the night and off. D Daniel celebrating already, and he should. I mean, whether win, lose, or draw, he, he really did well in that fight. Kevin so did well Kevin as well. Allred. Boy, he battled out of some great great submission Back attempts. Back and forth and battle, and uh, Ke uh, that was an awesome Daniel matchup. just able to get a little bit more control uh, and do more with his control positions in the end of that third round. All right, well, we're going to go to the judges for the, for the Official decision. Official decision. Daniel seems confident that he's won the fight. We'll find out if that's the case. You can't break elastic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well done, Daniel. Props to Kevin Allred. Both these guys did a great job tonight. Tyler Ayers Law Firm is a proud sponsor of the UCE. Call them for legal help at 255-5555. Talk to me, Kevin. What went on out there, man? A lot of bleeding and throwing and punching and just everything. What else What else could I bring you? That last round, you got a whole lot of ass in your face. You forgot that, right? Yeah, I am. I get a lot of booty. <laughs> so you're used to it? Yeah, it, it's, it's serious. All right, man. So didn't work out your way. How do you feel about the decision? Um, I, I disagree. But I'm, I'm glad to be a part of a fight like that. That was, that was great. Let's break it down a little bit. There were three rounds. What rounds did you feel like you came away with? Uh, one, two, three, four, and five. There you go. You thought you won the whole thing? Yeah. OK, all right, Kevin Allred, it didn't get over here, man. We're not done with you. It didn't work out for you, man. Uh, tonight you were good, but just not good enough. What's next for you? Are you going to come back and do this again? Yeah, yeah, more fighting. I promise you. Very, very nice. Thanks, brother. This post-fight interview brought to you by Beehive Bell Bonds because sometimes bad things happen to good people. Yeehaw! <laughs> Talk to me, man. Uh, came out here tonight with a job to do. I got her you done. done did. Yes, you did. Done did that. I got her done. Uh, I wanted to put on a good show. You uh, done did that, too. He didn't want to tap to anything. Oh, no, he sure done didn't. Submit. He just had too much adrenaline to submit him, so I just had to keep throwing the hands. I, I should have threw a lot more hands, but uh, I'm happy with the victory. Uh, I felt like I, I dominated uh, a little more than what the, the referees might have thought, but... Uh, those darn judges, I don't know what they're watching, those darn judges. Uh, they're, they're a tough crowd. They're a tough crowd. Uh, Maybe they just don't like your kind around here. You know, uh, that sometimes happens with us redneck backwoods hillbilly types. Uh, most folks tend to get rubbed a little raw when we gets around, you know. I don't even want to talk about what you rub raw, my man. All right, well, tonight you did it. You, you won, and so you're going to be in the lightweight tournament. How does it feel? It feels awesome. I feel very privileged and uh, proud to represent the combat cartel the best way I can. Well, you just might get a shot at the bird dog. How do you think a hillbilly is going to do up against the bird dog? I'll bring it to him like I bring it to everybody else. I'll just bring my A game and uh, try to represent. Yep, yep, yep. Good luck, man. Great Thanks, job. Sir. Thanks.
Daniel Grass getting a big win, man. He's going to make it into the lightweight championship brackets. That was a good fight. You know, he came in, he pulled out a good unanimous decision. I mean, any decision you Against could a very good fighter. Yeah, it definitely. It was a good fight, and I'm actually... I'm stoked. I love Daniel you're, Grass. You're good. Yeah, There's a lot of goodness going on the here. Is... We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Stick around. In your light heavyweight division, we got a kid, Andy Witt, who's just one of those rough and tumble, rough neck kind of guys going up against a kid that's got a little bit of a jujitsu background in Jeshua Arias. Yeah, Jeshua Arias from Chile. 
He's out here, you know, he's doing his thing. He's been fighting a couple times. And he's back in here and he's trying again. Well, what I am so proud of you. How you worked on your enunciation there, man. He got Chile down. Let's see if uh, Andy Witt's got what it takes to go up against some of that Chilean uh, jujitsu. It's light heavyweight and bar. Check it out. Well, here we go. Andy Witt coming off a, a string of losses. Um, we're going to see if he can actually make some make some adjustments to his game and, and see what he does against Jeshua here. Going up against the Terminator with his jiu-jitsu background. You think that'll be a, uh, an advantage for him against Andy Witt? Uh, definitely. You know, lately that's kind of been the, the chink in, um, in L7's armor. Uh, I, I don't know if he's finally learned that, uh, you know, toughness and, and fortitude will, will get you pretty far, but in the end, you've got to pay your dues and learn a technique or two. Well, all right, Andy Witt, six feet tall, 187 pounds, fighting out of Murray, Utah, street fighter from the Ultimate Combat Training Center. Here's our referee, Dave Selustep, getting these guys ready to go. You know, I'm always torn when I, when I see uh, L7 fight. I, I like to root for him. He, he's always exciting. Um, he's got so much heart. But uh, at the same time, I have to root for the guys that pay their dues. That's what we do. You know, we're, that's what we're all about. I, I can't root against what oh. we do. Oh, nice hip throw. Joshua gets a nice takedown. And oh, boy, he's, there's an he's arm on the right attack there. right away. We are seeing some, some great jujitsu so far out of, there's an elbow lock out of right the here. Terminator. He's putting on an elbow lock. Wow. And uh, there you go. Well, he, he wasted no time putting his uh, jujitsu background to good use in that fight. Closed the gap through the, got him in a hip throw, immediately had him in the arm lock. Andy Witt, you know, he wins some, he loses some, but I don't think he's used to getting tapped out that quick. Maybe, you know, hopefully that'll be the impetus that he needs to um, invest in some training. Find top name brand clothing at unspeakable prices at Big Rock Clothing. Mention UCE and save 10%. And he says he wants a do-over, right? That's right, I want a do-over. Right now. Look at him, tell him. Right now, let's go again. That was, that was bull crap. <laughs> Hold on, let me get my arm out of this sling first and then we'll do it one more time. Yeah, that, that I did not expect that, seriously. You did tap though, you know that when you tap, they stop it and then that's it. Yeah, I, I hate tapping, I've never tapped out. I gotta give it up to this guy. I've never tapped before, it's my 10th fight and he actually made me tap, so. I'll be honest with you, I was a little surprised when I saw the tappy tap come out right there. So, Andy Witt, what are we gonna do to prevent that tap coming out again. Train. Oh my God. Don't say the T word. I know, you know better than that. Training's hard. Training's difficult. It takes time, it takes effort. You don't want to do that, do you? Of course I do. Your dad wants you to, I'll tell you that. I was talking to him earlier, he said, man, what are we gonna do to get this guy to train? What are we gonna do to get you to train? Give me a car? I don't know. <laughs> you got it, my man, a car. We're gonna get him a car and then he's gonna come down and train. Andy Witt, tonight you were good. But just not good enough. L7, come back and do it again, bro. I'll definitely be back. I'll be back next week. I know you will. Zotes has the most delicious sunflower seeds anywhere. Check out Zotes.com for a complete list of flavors. Now, Jeshua, you were mad at me a couple days ago because we didn't give you enough notice for this fight. Are you happy now? Yeah, I'm happy. Like I told you, I like to do this professional and I like to make my show in here, so. You know what else he was mad at us for? Because we had a guy that speaks Spanish calling. I go, dude, I speak English just fine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but you sound like you speak Spanish. So we thought we was trying to be accommodating and you didn't like that, did you? No, I, actually, that's a really matter, you know, but longer that you guys can understand me and, and we, get it, we can get along to each other, you know? We're communicating just fine, my man. I'll tell you what, you're communicating yourself very well in the cage, though. That's the second time you pulled that move off. Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, Soon as you know, uh, I've been growing up with this kind of move, and you know, it's in my blood pretty much. All right, we're gonna search high and low to find somebody that's not gonna get caught in that move, Joshua. When are you gonna come back and do this again? Well, uh, I have to train a little bit. I wanna get, you know, my check a little bit better. And probably I wanna call somebody to come to fight with me, so. You got somebody in mind? Yeah, just wait for that. I'm not gonna say the name Spit yet. Spit it out, come on, Joshua. Not yet. All right, I'm going to find out and I'll let you all know. Jeshua, great job tonight. Congratulations. All right, thank you, man. Mullet, apparently you spent more time learning how to pronunciate Chile than uh, Andy Witt learned in defending armbars. Well, you know, that was a pretty slick armbar, Mike. You know, 24 seconds into round one. That, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, Jeshua is a tough kid. Look forward to seeing him come back and do it again. And we know that Andy Witt will be back. we got more of the Ultimate Combat. Stick around.
<laughs> Mike Sugarloaf Christman's got something about him that people just want to punch. Mac Torres from the southern part of the state wanted to come and get into a fight tonight. I said, well, all we've got is Crispin. He said, give me that guy. Yeah, this Mac Torres kid, he, he's got he's got the personality that he's just going to come in and he's going to whoop on somebody, and he doesn't care who it is. And Sugarloaf, he likes to get punched in the face a lot, so I think this makes for a good matchup. I mean, this is a match made in heaven. Lightweight no host bar, check it out. All right, well, we don't know that much about Mac here. He's kind of a, a wild card, and um, here he is coming in against uh, Sugarloaf, a, a very seasoned, very experienced fighter. Have you ever wanted to punch Sugar Loaf Yamasaki? You know what? Not really. Me neither. I, I think, think he's, he's such a, a he's a nice guy. He's always been a very nice guy. Well, Tal uh, Mac Torres coming in. He's 185 pounds against uh, Mike Sugar Loaf. Mike trying to fight in all the weight classes. Yeah, I, I swear. <laughs> the only one he's not attempting is Superfly in the uh, in the round of champions. Mike Chrisman, five foot seven, 185 pounds, West Valley ground and pound style, coming out of the combat cartel. A little bit of a height difference there. See if that plays into it. Referee Dave Selyse gets him going. And round one, here we go. Sugarloaf looks ready to rock. So is this the heaviest weight class he's fighting in or the lightest? Is he working his way up or down? <laughs> I think he's working his way all around. He's leading with his face uh, in classic. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to see him get his chin down a little. Oh, oh boy. but well, hey, he lands anyway, so. Boy. <laughs> he's going to pass the guard. And nice. See, that's a double nice. under guard pass right there. Great work. Great work, Sugarloaf. All right. Let's. Let's see if uh, Torres has a ground game and can get out of this situation. Nice little short elbow by Chrisman with that left elbow. And Torres trying, trying to get that right leg in there, maybe maybe working towards getting the guard. And you can kind of see here um, more of a conventional style here, uh, pulling the guard, or not pulling the guard, trying to get the guard back when you're that close up to the fence. Uh, it's kind of a new... In old school versus new new school of theory, uh, school of thought. You know, different theories on how things are done, and that's why we would maybe not do that. Yeah, exactly. That can be a tough spot to be in. It's I, I find it easier to get off your back when you're when you're not in the guard against the cage. But Torres managed to do it anyway. Yep, yep. And he ate a couple shots on the way up, but they're back to their doesn't feet. Seem let's like, see what uh, they can do. He's any worse for the wear. You can see a little oh, bruising on uh, Chrisman's right. left cheek. He's, he's not, didn't come out of there unscathed. We're nice jabs. Beautiful jabs. It's actually really nice. If he could get, get, get his chin down, he'd be, um, oh, and a nice tie kick. Nice jabs, nice tie kick. Oh, oh, oh great oh, shots. Oh, wow, he's two on. Two in a row. There, these guys are just swinging oh, for the, oh, and he oh, comes back. An overhand <laughs> and an uppercut. Torres throwing some nice boxing. I only know one and... letter of the alphabet, and it's the letter O. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. See? Dave Selyusted getting in on the action. <laughs> Slap that hand, Dave. All right, Sugar Loaf. Let's see if he can pass that. Guard He's got again. another double under guard pass. Working on it. Keep, working on keep it. Keep working on that. Don't he needs to watch the, the Sarah Callquest uh, episode so he can. Or maybe Pop not, because oh, he pulled it off. Right he's, elbows. He's landing some nice, nice elbows. Right. Oh, Ooh, and another one. Right on the money. i got to stay upset. Stop saying, oh, I can't help it. <laughs> well, this has been an action-packed fight from the get-go. Ah, Chris Chrisman takes got full mount. mount. He's got to clear his head, and uh, there it is. Posture up and start hammering down. Boy, Oh, is he going to go for a submission, for a submission. Here, Don't do that. Yeah, why give up that good position? Just pound that guy. Stick stick with, with what, what works for you, Chrisman. Pound that sucker. Yeah, I'd like to see him sit up and just, just on the other side. Oh away. boy, Mac, you got to wrap up an arm and roll, kid. I'm telling a 185-pound monster <laughs> what to do. Crispin working on an arm lock, and once again, I think he's better off just punching. Yeah, punching elbow. You got eight there. seconds. Go hog wild. Let him fly. And if you're Mac, you just gotta. Whoa. What, what, what was that? Maybe our, our studio clock is a little bit off here, but. Uh, Either way, uh, Mac makes it to the second round. I think um, I might have even scored that a 10-8 round. There's a knockdown. There is domination. Um, oh, I don't know. I, th I think uh, Crispin looked real good, but there, there was a couple moments there where he was getting backed up with some He got backed up, but too. he didn't get put down. Well, that's a good point. Round two coming up here. Let's see if uh, Max Corner was able to give him any advice and if he was able to make any adjustments between rounds. Who looks who looks more tired, Yamasaki? They both guys are pretty fresh, actually, for big guys that fought that hard of a fight in the first round. Time will tell. 
Well, both guys just kind of feeling each other out, waiting to get that initial oh, little, little slip and slide going oh. on, and they're going to just throw down again. Let's you know, you'll you'll tend to, you'll see that as a fight progresses, uh, fighters will be a little bit more um, try to be more economical about how to how they attack. And Chrisman with the takedown attempt, and he gets shot down on that. Torres stuffed it. Great, great uh, takedown defense. Oh, did that right connect? That looked heavy. And I think it just missed. Oh! Oh, but Torres comes Torres back. Torres with, with a the huge right. straight right. And Chrisman just holding on to that leg, wrap them both up, and pull them out. Torres is going to punch from standing, which you're not supposed to do, and Dave's all over that. It was great rest. Excellent uh, persistence by Sugarloaf. Sometimes Finally that's what that it takes down. to get a guy down. You just grab onto something and, and don't keep, let go. Keep working on it. Some blood on the face of Torres there. How, and Chrisman, he's looking looking pretty good. He's working back for on the top mount. here. Working for the mount. Doing a good job of getting Torres up against the cage and slipping those little elbows in. And looks like Chrisman might be also bleeding. Both guys a little busted Boom. up. And, oh, big there's shot. a big shot. Neon belly mount, an excellent position. Right up against the fence, a terrible situation for uh, for Matt Kier. He needs to get that knee off his gut. Tough spot for Torres to be in. Yeah, he's got a bridge, he's got a move. He's, oh. Sometimes you just gotta spaz out and get out of there. Anything you can do, especially with Dave Selustead watching that close, the fight could get stopped any time. I'd like to see Chrisman throw a left elbow. Oh, oh I like boy, the way he's, he's, he's worked on that arm trap. Ooh. Two against one now. It's gonna make it even more difficult for Torres down there. Torres continues to throw knees to the body. I think he'd be better off just working on getting out of there. Yeah. But he's got a lot of fight in him. This guy's tough. He's scrappy. He's yeah, good. and if you don't know what to do, then you know. Sometimes start something's better away. than nothing. Yep. yep. Don't just at least he's not just laying there and dying, and, and I have to applaud that effort. Chrisman, we meanwhile, just, just hammering, hammering away. away. Just throwing punches, elbows, keeping his position solid. Torres maybe starting to walk up the cage a little bit in an attempt to get out of there, or maybe just continue trying to protect himself. I think he's actually done a pretty good thing by going uh, 69 here. I, I think I don't think see Chrisman's going to the body now, and I don't think those those punches to the body from that position are nearly as effective as oh, right. shots to the head. He's doing it. He's doing a pretty dang good job of defending himself for being in a pretty rough spot for the better part of this round. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna go into a round three here, Yamasaki. Oh boy, look at him! He, uh, uh, a lot of blood, but I don't think I don't see any it's serious. Pretty superficial, there. but yeah. uh, you know it looks bad for the um, for the judges. That might have been another 10-8 round. Did you Chrisman see? looks pretty fresh. Chrisman does. I'm surprised. Sugarloaf's looking looking ready. He's to not go. breathing that hard. Dr. Kachamani calling oh, the fight off, and I, um, I wonder what what the reason for for calling it was. I didn't see any major cuts or anything, but um, I'm thinking we're we just witnessed a broken spirit. Yeah. Great fight, Chrisman, and you know, go and uh, just stick with it, Mac. You, you have a lot of fight, and you have a lot of a lot of good tools. Um, hang in there, you, and come back, give it another shot. You'll you'll do better next time. But uh, congratulations, Mike. Great fight. Skull Candy, the official headphones of the UCE. Check out their complete line of headphones and accessories at SkullCandy.com. Sugar Shorts, it's been a little while. I mean, you've been fighting a lot, and it's been a little while since I interviewed you. Talk to me, man. What's going on with you? Oh, man, I feel great. I moved up a weight class. I uh, gained weight for this fight, actually, because I knew he was 205. I was almost there anyway, but... Uh, tough kid, man. I felt some of his punches. Rocked me like four or five times. No, it didn't interrupt. You knocked on your ass for a minute. Uh, I didn't fall. Oh, uh, yeah, you <laughs> did. You'll review the tape and know that you fell on your ass. But let me, talk, let me tell you this right now, Sugarloaf. That kid was tough. That kid was no joke. And you stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And, and here, you knew going into this fight his strong point was stand-up. And yet... Your dumbass still stood with him. What's up? You know, Mike, I'll stand with anybody. I may get knocked around, but it looks like I come out with the W. You did tonight, Sugarloaf, and I'm telling you, I've been so I've been very impressed with your progress, and I'm not talking about just your stand-up. I mean, your whole physicality used to be a little tubby, chubby, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But but your whole your whole 
persona, your whole, every, all about Sugarloaf has come so far. Yeah, you know, I started out here about two years ago, really fat, really sloppy. Oh, really, really fat and sloppy. And I uh, came down to the best gym in the state of Utah at UCTC. Have the best team in the state, Combat Cartel. I love all of them. I love everybody that came out tonight to support me. I had one hell of a crowd tonight, Mike. Uh, you had 27 people here. Who knew that Sugarloaf knew 27 people? You know, it's uh, and they liked him. I mean, he might know 27, but 27 that came and cheered for you. That's that's weird. Yeah, you know, I think it's all because of my fighting. And your bad breath. I feel sorry for you, bro. You got to admit. You know, uh, I, owe, I owe everything to Cuddle Buddy. You know who you are. Uh, <laughs> what a jerk. If you know what he's talking about, it's just not funny. Sugarloaf, I'm proud of you. You did a great job tonight, bro. Thanks. I just got to thank some other people. I got to thank you, of course, Mike. The UCE fans has come out and support the show. We need you. We love you. My combat cartel fight team, grill guards, uh, knee case. Grill guards? What? Grill guards. Grill guards. Go to grillguards.com. Grill guards Check them out. All right, th listen, you've talked a lot, and you talk a lot always, but the fans want to know. Want to cuddle? <laughs> <laughs> Man, again, we've had some great night of fights tonight, and Mac Torres coming in and giving Sugarloaf all he could handle for two rounds. Yeah, but you know, all he could handle for two rounds was also all he could dish out for two rounds. But <laughs> yeah. it was a great fight regardless, just unable to come out for that bell. Hopefully we get Mac Torres up here to do it again. And once again, we know Sugarloaf will be back. We hope you'll be back as well. We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Stick around.
Doing it for the belt, baby. It's right here, lightweight brackets at your main event. What's going on? Oh, we got Chase Pearson coming in here and fighting Wade Haskell for the belt. Er, in the tournament, champions trying to work their way up to get the belt. Working their way toward the ever elusive championship belt. This only comes around once a year, and I know both these guys can kind of taste it. Lightweight knows, Bart, check it out. Uh, if he's a wrestler, I, I assume I'll need to be ready to sprawl. Um, but I'll just take it as it comes and dish it out as I can, I guess. I don't really have a message to send him. Just, I don't know, let's just have a good fight, I guess. Well, I have to agree with Mike on this one. Um, you know, you can just sense the intensity level going up a notch for these fighters in the, in the Tournament of Champions. Absolutely. Right here we've got Chase, the real deal Pearson. I, I hear they're throwing the, the wrestler thing around. He looks like a wrestler. Five foot six, 160 pounds. Independent fighter fighting out of Cedar City. And here's his opponent, Wade, the instigator Haskell. Boy, both these guys are pretty built, aren't they? You know what? I've heard about Wade was with uh, Team Unbreakable for a time. Um, you know, 5'9", 160 pounds from Payson. Wrestler, or, uh, another wrestler. Um, you know, out of that, that team, they, they always, you know, put good fundamentals, good good sound technique. They're always very tough. But I heard he's, he's taking a, a break, uh, and you know what? I don't know if you really want to do that and then come into the fight against someone at the caliber of, of a Chase Pearson. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> not not recommended, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I'd say Wade Haskell's got a bit of a size advantage. We'll see if it plays into the fight at all. Chase working some nice head movement. Chase working good head movement and, and kind of a low posture, maybe looking to, to shoot since we've been hearing about his wrestling. Ooh, and eats no, a jab. he comes out swinging. He's to heck with the wrestling. I'm just going to knock this guy's block off. Man, wait. Oh, he sticks him back. Hey, now they're one and one, jab, jab to there. jab. Haskell circling with the little left jab there, filling each other out still. I really like uh, Chase Pearson's lateral movement. He's side to side, his hands are up. He's, he's, he's looking sharp. Haskell's keeping his hands up well too. Lots of good footwork out of these guys. Well, you really can sense the intensity of their, their oh, round of champion sure. guys. It's just a whole nother. You know, I think it's actually thrown uh, uh, Haskell off a little bit, the fact that Chase has not pursued a takedown up to this point. Yes, I think you're right. I think he was expecting that. In fact, he mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. Potentially trained for that. And now that he's been thrown a curveball, he hasn't quite made the adjustment yet. A little bit of feeling out, some some kicks punch, uh, kicks nice thrown and uppercut uh, by Chase. Chase wow. just he going to everything. Oh, and a big right hand. Nice right. And hand. that's it. He wow, knew it. He knew it go. too. He connected with that right hook, and he, uh, it, he? he knew that uh, Wade had had enough. Well, there's a great start to the lightweight round of champions. Oh boy, did he cut him with that too? Oh man, Chase Pearson, he's going to be a force in that uh, division of the he round of champions. He doesn't look winded one soccer. bit, and uh, congratulations, Chase. Great fight. Way to fight. go, Chase. We didn't even see his wrestling, so if uh, you know wrestling's supposed to be a strong suit, and his hands look that good, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with wow. in this round of champions. Wow, you know, to, to discipline yourself, to just use your hands to, you know, to develop that tool. Wow. This post-fight interview brought to you by Beehive Bell Bonds because sometimes bad things happen to good people. Hey, Haskell, what the hell happened? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. He, he hits harder than anybody I've ever sparred with or fought with. That was a, that was a hell of a hit. It's almost not fair, huh? What a jerk. Yeah, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> you bled a little bit of it though, man. And I've been there. I know how that feels when it just starts coming down. And you, it, that's enough, right? It, it was good. My, my hat's off to him. I, I didn't expect it. I don't want to say I underestimated him because I didn't. I knew he was going to be tough. Look I, at him. I mean, he looks yeah. like he's going to tough. Well, he's, he's from southern Utah. They're all kind of tough down there, right? You know, it, I, I'm telling you, we've done this show for a long time. And anytime we get somebody like they've broken loose from southern Utah and they make their way up to the show, they always come up with an attitude and they're kind of tough. You know what, though? I didn't even cry, so. <laughs> you were crying tears, my man. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, Wade Haskell, you were good, but just not good enough tonight. But I'll tell you what, you got a fan right here. Thanks. All right, brother. Great job, man. Oh, can I thank yeah, yeah. I just want to thank my corners over here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And 
all the people that spar and, and uh, roll with me down in pace. And, and buddy, I tell you, you bring a lot of people when you come, man. That's very cool. It brings the uh, the energy in the room up, and I appreciate it. I definitely need to thank all of them for coming. I, I uh, it was exciting, right? I mean, that was the most exciting one minute twenty seconds since last time I was with a lady. Oh, well, there you go. Wrong, wrong guy won. Actually, the better man won. Oh, there you go. Great job, Ab. Tyler Ayers Law Firm is a proud sponsor of the UCE. Call them for legal help at 255-5555. What is it about you Pearsons that makes you so damn tough? Hey man, we're just here to fight, that's all. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right there, but I'm telling you, man, you guys have that it, that it factor that you can't teach, you can't coach, you, you guys got it. Yeah, we're here to go to the top, Mike. That's what we're gonna do. I like my man, so I know Bird Dog's here somewhere. Send a message to Bird Dog. Tell him who's winning this division. Hey, Bursley, I just want you to know, bud, I'm coming to fight. One, one of us is going to walk out of here a winner. I'm just here to put on a good show and fight, bud. I'm going to tell you what, here's another thing. Now, we've been doing this show for a long time, and Jeff Rutherford is like, he's like, he's been, he's kind of a legend of the UCE. He's the guy that uh, knocked Steve Sharp out. He's been around for a while. And he saw you come out with real deal on your chest. He said, wait a minute. That's my nickname. Well, it's that great. I'm going to be the next great one. What can I say? Hey, guess what? It ain't anymore, my man. It ain't anymore. <laughs> All right, hey, I got to tell you, I love having you guys come and, and fighting the show. You guys, you bring it every time you do. And I, when I say you guys, I'm talking about you and Rusty. But tonight, you brought it. Chase, you did your thing tonight. Great job. Congratulations. Appreciate it, Mike. Appreciate it a lot. Hey, I got a few people I'd like to thank. First of all, my family for coming out. My friends from Clear Down and Cedar came up tonight. Also, I got a few people in Cedar I'd like to thank, especially my chiropractor, since he says he don't ever get noticed. I want to thank him and uh, Toads. Like Buddy, I'm telling you right now, you can't do it without somebody cracking your back, can you? No, I can't. Chiropractor's the way to go. Appreciate it. Very, very nice. Great job. Congratulations. That's going to put a wrap on tonight's show, but uh, Chase Pearson showing that he belongs in this tournament. He's got to be among one of the favorites in the lightweight division here. Oh, yeah, that was a great fight coming out and owning that fight, too. You know, he just came out TKO in the first round. That was beautiful. OK, we want to mention something. The Ultimate Combat Experience kind of holds near and dear to our hearts, uh, the St. Baldrick's uh, organization. Talk to me a little bit about what goes on. Here. Well, first of all, you know, we want to invite you guys to try and be a hero for a kid with cancer with the St. Baldrick's Day organization. And really what it is is these guys, they get together, and if you got like six inches of hair or more, you shave it off and you auction it, and it helps to raise money for these kids with cancer. Well, you know, and it's something that we really, uh, we've been involved with the last couple of years. Uh, Levi Roberts, uh, what a great kid. He grows his hair out every year just for this thing. Uh, please join us down there. Is it, uh, what's the date on it? It's going to be on March 30th at Club 90. Okay, if you want more information about that, it's stbaldricks.org. Check him out online. Uh, it's Ultimate Combat Express. We'll see you next week. Warrior.